and uh, hello, uh, welcome to this uh, discussion. We're getting late in the uh, getting late in the discussions. Only a few more before we're done. So this is the uh, focus of this discussion will be on uh, both pricing uh, concepts and pricing strategies. And before we talk about pricing concepts and before we talk about pricing strategies, uh, present a, a definition of what we mean by price. And a price uh, simply refers to the sum of all values that customers are willing to give up in order to gain benefit from a uh, good or service. So again, a price is the sum of all values that customers are willing to give up uh, in order to gain benefit from a good or a service. And so for example, right, um, you paid, I think, $700 a credit hour uh, to take this course. So in your mind, uh, in order to get three credits, you were willing to part with basically $2,100. Um, key thing, a couple of key uh, uh, things to note about prices is that prices don't have to involve money. Now increasingly they do involve money. Uh, you know, unlike 100, 200 years ago uh, where <clears throat> exchanges might not have always been um, or the prices associated with exchanges might not always have involved money. They don't have to involve money. Okay, price does not have to involve money. You know, if if for example, uh, you know, your family had a uh, had a farm, and uh, your family was basically said, "We'll give you uh, we'll give you six really good cows in exchange for a three credit course." That, and assuming that. The institution, as well as perhaps the professor, would, you know, take six cows in exchange for, you know, learn about principles of marking. That that would refer to that. That's a price, right? The six cows equals three credits. Not a problem. Second thing about price that's important is that, particularly unlike uh, the place function, particularly unlike like logistics, price is a very flexible uh, component of the marking mix. And uh, we increasingly see that in, in part because of uh, you know, advances in technology. Uh, the, the, the fact that uh, organizations can adjust their prices virtually instantaneously now uh, based on a variety of factors. I know that uh, unlike when I was your age, one of the things that I see now is you know, when I go by a gas station, you know, the price might be one thing in the morning and when I drive home at night it's something else. Um, and and so again, price is a very flexible uh, component of the uh, of the market mix. So the first thing, uh, the first part of this, uh, after having defined price, that we're going to look at is is pricing concepts. And um, the thing to uh, one thing to consider, and, and I kind of briefly alluded to it a few minutes ago, is is that before we go into a more detailed discussion of pricing concepts, the importance of understanding how or macro environmental factors can influence price and the example that I that I just gave uh, you know about technology is certainly technology is a component of the macro environment and, and we you know we see how uh, technology can um, you know impact prices particularly with an organization's ability to uh, raise or lower prices according to uh, you know other factors uh, other factors that are out there and a second uh, macroenvironmental factor to think about, but not the only one to think about that could affect price, is economic conditions. <clears throat> and so one of the things that is still a lasting uh, kind of uh, remnant of the, you know, the Great Recession that occurred between 2007 and 2009 is a number of organizations that still uh, look to create some sort of... Uh, <clears throat> pricing mechanism that will make their offerings uh, attractive to customers. So the number of, let's say, restaurants, if you think about there's still, you know, Applebee's is still, you know, maybe got its three for 20 kind of thing, or, you know, value meals are, uh, you know, exceedingly popular, more popular now than they were, you know, five to seven years ago. So, you know, the macroenvironmental uh, factors have a tremendous influence on, uh, on price. 
And so in terms of pricing concepts, um, the book does a really nice job. The book uh, uses the uh, 5C uh, framework to uh, discuss uh, pricing concepts, and that's an absolutely wonderful framework. And we'll briefly uh, go over the five Cs of, uh, of, of pricing. And, and one is uh, company objectives. So one C is company objectives. And, you know, Exhibit 14.2 in the book does a really nice job of uh, you know, providing what an objective might be and, and what it might mean for uh, pricing. You know, the key thing to take away from it is that depending on what an organization is attempting to achieve, that's going to impact uh, an organization's approach to pricing. So that if an organization is uh, and you know wants to maximize profits, that, that would be a different you know that would lead to a different set of prices or prices than if an organization were looking to capture market share. You know, maximizing profit might mean that an organization might go with a higher price, not necessarily, but could go with a higher price. Whereas if you're trying to capture market share, you're probably looking at a at a lower price so that you can get more, so that you can get more customers. So, company objectives is uh, is is one of the C's. A second uh, C <coughs> in the five C framework is customers, and <coughs> you know. Uh, the book looks at things like demand curves and, and elasticity of, uh, of demand and elasticity of demand, if you remember from Econ 201 and 202, refers to the uh, <clears throat> you know, sensitivity or a change in demand resulting from a change in price. And so the, you know, understanding the price elasticity is important from a marketing perspective so that, you know, you, so that an organization doesn't make a, you know, kind of a pricing boo-boo or a pricing error. So, for example, if you have inelastic, remember what inelastic price is, basically the, you know, the demand volume will change, but, uh, you know, the, the change in, uh, <clears throat> the change in volume is, is uh, not as great as maybe the, uh, the change in price. Uh, so, in, the, in other words, what would happen is, and this is the, always the quick and dirty way, is that when you have uh, inelastic demand, what happens is if you drop prices, uh, total revenues go down. If you if you raise prices, total revenues go up. So, if you're faced with a case of inelastic demand, for example, as a marketer, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to drop your price. Right? And in fact, you might be able to. Uh, <clears throat> you know, increase your price because while demand will take some hit, it's not going to be a sufficient enough hit to, you know, really damage, uh, to damage revenues. So uh, understanding the price elasticity of demand. So that's why, you know, sometimes you'll see where, um, you know, airlines, as an example, you'll have, you know, basically leisure fares and, and, and maybe more business oriented fares because the elasticity of demand for pleasure travel is very different than the elasticity of demand for business travel. Business travel time is much more important than money. Pleasure travel, money tends to be more important than time. So you end up with different prices to reflect the different elasticities of different segments all right, who might be traveling. So a third, uh, third C in the uh, 5C uh, framework is cost. And you know, that's really yay for basically the 75% of you in, in this course who are accountancy majors. And so all the stuff that you've learned you know, through your uh, through your accountancy courses comes into play here. And it's, you know, fixed cost, variable cost, total cost, marginal cost, and all those, you know, considerations. And, and, and so an understanding of, okay, fixed costs don't vary with output, variable costs vary. In proportion to output, total cost, sum of fixed and variable costs, and then marginal cost, cost of producing an additional unit. Those have important implications for, uh, you know, for pricing. And uh, so... Uh, you know, real simple kind of thing, and it's kind of a head scratcher to to some extent. I mean, if you have excess capacity, for example, unused available capacity, you, know, you might one one suggestion might be, well, if you you know, let's say you're a baseball team and you've got a forty thousand seat stadium and <clears throat> you sold fifteen thousand tickets, and it's an hour before game time, and there's twenty five thousand empty seats. You know, why don't you drop the price of the ticket to a dollar? Because, you know, 
the marginal cost of putting another person in the ballpark when you've got 25,000 extra seats is pretty much nothing. You know, your your cost structure isn't going to change that much. They don't generally play, you know, pay the baseball players any more or any less based on the number of people in the, um, you know, in the stands. The umpires don't get paid any more or any less. So, you know, the marginal cost is a, you know, really key consideration. It can have an important influence on uh, on pricing. A fourth, uh, fourth, excuse me, a fourth C is competition, and, and, and in this situation, you need to have an understanding of the various market structures that exist. And you might remember from economics uh, that you have monopolies, <coughs> oligopolies, <coughs> monopolistic competition, and pure competition. And each one of those, you know, tends to have a different pricing strategy. And so, in a monopoly, an organization might not really worry about pricing because customers don't have a choice, right? either take this price or don't take the service. Oligopoly, oftentimes you're going to have an industry price leader. So companies might, you know, if you're maybe a smaller competitor, um, you might wait to see what your, you know, kind of what the, the alpha dog in the industry does with respect to price. Okay. And the fifth, the fifth C of the, the 5C framework is channel members. And this goes back to you know some of the discussions we had with respect to uh, intermediaries and, and marketing channels. And um, excuse me, Diet Coke today, a little different. <clears throat> it comes important when you know when when an organization is in a channel situation. Because important to understand, you know, what are the other channel members attempting to achieve. Uh, in the channel, and so, you know, if, if if you were to be in a channel where, you know, one organization is trying to maximize profit, another organization is trying to maximize market share, those are two, you know, objectives that that, that just kind of are, at, 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 you know, at, at odds with each other. So, channel members are a fifth uh, fifth consideration in the five uh, C framework. So that presents a you know quick and dirty overview of uh, pricing concepts. The next thing to uh, to talk about uh, in this discussion involves pricing strategy, and this is simply refers to an organization's long-term uh, approach to setting prices. And um, you know, as the book points out, this, this, this stuff's pretty standard, regardless of which uh, principles of marketing textbook that uh, that you used. Uh, an organization can uh, choose from a variety of cost-based pricing strategies. Right, so the focus primarily will be on cost. Um, an organization can choose from uh, competition-based strategies. Again, the primary focus is going to be based on competition. And then there are uh, value-based uh, pricing strategies, and you know things such as value meals would be an example. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about and going in a little different direction uh, the, the the total cost of ownership. Uh, approach that has become very popular in a number of industries. Uh, historically, what's happened is that uh, organizations have often just considered uh, purchase price as a predominant cost uh, associated with a, with a product. And, and what the total cost of ownership is, suggests is that um, organizations might come to a very different um, pricing philosophy or pricing strategy uh, if all the costs associated with getting a product were considered. So, for example, you've got something like the purchase price. Okay, <clears throat> you know, you can go on, you can go into Best Buy and you can look at a, you know, let's say a 48 inch TV, 48 inch screen TV, and you go, the purchase price of this is, you know, X dollars. But there's other costs involved. So, for example, remember when we talked about consumer behavior, we talked about uh, one of the steps in the process, is the consumer decision making process is information search. Searching for information takes time, costs money. So search costs are something in the total cost of ownership approach that would be added to the, you know, kind of the list price of a product. And then another cost that would come in uh, in, in the total cost of ownership approach would be, um, you know, let's say after five years you've decided you no longer like this 48 or 50 inch TV. What do you do with it? 
And so, you know, if you put it down in your basement and it's taken up space, that's a cost. Uh, if you decide that it needs to be hauled away, that's a cost. So what I'm getting at is, is, is that, you know, total cost of ownership looks at a lot of different costs other than just the purchase price or the, the cost of purchase. And that leads to a whole different sense of, of you know, what a product's true value is. And so, you, you know, you, you, the purchase price you really need to look sometimes at the purchase price to see exactly what that purchase price uh, includes. And, and so to give you an example, um, every three years I lease a BMW. And one of the nice things about the BMW that the BMWs that I lease is that I don't have to worry about maintenance at all, at all. So, you know, when I need my one-year service, I take the car in, there's no cost. I need two-year service, take the car in, there's no cost. Uh, if, you know, the radiator blows, uh, no cost. Uh, you know, unless somehow I've, you know, gone out with a pickaxe and, and, you know, busted open the radiator. So, you know, while the car might cost X number of dollars, there's a lot of other things that I'm getting there as part of that price that that that, that kind of changed the you know kind of the value equation so it's you know there's actually you know when you're paying x amount of dollars for a bmw there's actually more value there than just you know just looking at the uh, at the purchase price and so related to pricing strategies or pricing tactics and these tend to be more short-term ways uh, that organizations go about to achieve their uh, pricing strategies and there's a variety of pricing strategy uh, excuse me pricing tactics that are out there and I'll just touch on a couple of them uh, you know one is quantity discounts and we all know how quantity discounts work right generally the more you buy of something uh, the the lower the price per unit is is going to be right so you know as a general rule <clears throat> I always like you know, going to stores, given that I'm kind of a marketer, I play one on TV, literally here, right? I'm, I'm on TV or I'm on the, I'm on video, um, and and sometimes see if the quantity discount thing is 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 violated. So I was in uh, I was in Marks last week, and I was looking at the uh, at the price of batteries, and I saw a two pack of batteries for uh, like two ninety eight, <clears throat> and uh, then I saw the same battery in a one pack. And it was like 127, and it's like okay, so two for 298 or one for 127. Uh, in that case, the quantity discount doesn't exactly uh, doesn't exactly work. So you know, the idea is that uh, you know it's, it's cheaper for for me to buy cat food in 25 pound bags than in five five pound bags uh, as as a as a general rule. The second uh, pricing tactic is something known as product bundle pricing, and this is where uh, two or more complementary complementary products are offered as a as a package or a bundle and uh, the price of that package or bundle is less than uh, if the products were sold individually so a classic example of that would be uh, things like value meals uh, a lot of telecommunication telecommunication providers offer uh, bundles so you know TV cable internet excuse me, TV cable internet no, TV TV internet um, and um, phone uh, might be all packaged together as one. And then a third uh, pricing tactic is something known as uh, captive product pricing. And this is, uh, refers to prices for products that must be uh, used with other products. So a classic example is, given that I'm a guy, is razors and razor plates. And so oftentimes the, uh, the razor is relatively inexpensive. It's the razor blades that get you, and uh, increasingly with, uh, in some cases with uh, cell phones or mobile phones, um, the phone is really inexpensive. It's the, you know, it's the service plan and the fact that you have to have a two-year contract that uh, that uh, gets you. All right. So the clock on the wall tells me that I hit about 19 minutes, so I'll stop there and uh, see you for integrated uh, marketing communications. Bye.